So breakers are officially referred to as circuit breakers. And the interesting thing with breakers is that they have two different ratings for the tripping current. They have an instantaneous tripping current rating and a long-term tripping current rating. And this is, uh, in my opinion, this is a significant advantage of circuit breakers. So what I want to do is I want to get it to go to the whiteboard again, and I want us to get it to dissect a typical circuit breaker so that I can show you which kind of components are inside of a circuit breaker. And by doing that, I will also be able to show you the actual difference between the instantaneous and the long-term tripping current rating and show you the two different mechanisms that are built inside of the breaker to allow for those two different mechanisms to occur inside of one breaker. So we are going to open up this breaker. We're going to open it up and we're going to dissect it bit by bit because I think it will be interesting for you to be aware of all the different components that are inside of there. And it might look like a little bit of a spaghetti. So let's call out the names, the, the sections or the components of the breaker one by one. So we start with the terminals, right? So the, the two points on the breaker where you place the wire inside and then with a screw connection, you can tighten the, the connection between the wire and the breaker. So those are the, that's the first component. The second component is the actuator uh, lever. So the, the point where you can control the breaker, right? If it trips by itself or if you want to trip it, uh, you can control the actuator lever there. And then as you're as you're controlling the lever, you normally feel that there's a kind of resistance and then it clicks into place, right? So that is being controlled by the actuator mechanism, which is behind the actual actual lever. And then the mechanism is controlling the component where it's all about, which are the physical contacts. So the contacts are why you're actually opening and breaking the circuit, right? So the lever and the mechanism together, they are controlling the, uh, the contacts. And then if you look carefully here, you can also see the bimetallic strip. So the bimetallic strip is a strip made of two metals. And what it does is that if, if a certain amount of current uh, passes through the bimetallic strip, it tends to bend towards one way. And the bimetallic strip allows for the slow tripping current. So if your current is somewhere in the range where it would normally trip, then as the current is running through the bimetallic strip, the bimetallic strip will heat up. And if you continue to operate the breaker at its maximum design characteristics, then it will slowly start to bend more and more and more. And then it will trip the, the breaker. It will open the contacts and your circuit breaker will disconnect the circuit. Now, most of the breakers, they have a calibration screw somewhere normally at the top of the breaker, which is used to fine tune at which point the bimetallic strip will open or close the circuit based on the, on the slow tripping current, right? This, this calibration screw, you should not touch it. The calibration screw is set in the factory and you should not touch the calibration screw. All right, let him shut up for a second. I just want to explain to you that the content of this video is copied from the complete course of energy systems. If this information is enough for you, great. If you want to learn more and if you want to get access to the complete course, then check the information in the description below. All right, you go out again. So that's the, the bimetallic strip with the calibration screw for the slow tripping current. Now let's look at the, the solenoid. So the solenoid fulfills the function of the other tripping current rate, the instantaneous tripping current. So all of the current will be fed through this coil. You can see the coil wound up there. And because there is a magnet inside of the coil, remember we looked at that before as well, when we looked at the difference between AC and DC and how AC is being created. So you have like a, a conductive coil wound around a, a magnet, some kind of body of, of metal. And then the solenoid allows for the instantaneous stripping uh, value because if the current runs through there and it's above a certain value, then it will push the, the piece of metal that's inside, it will push it one way. And then as a result, it's activating the lever uh, mechanism and the lever mechanism is then opening the contacts and the circuit is interrupted again. And now that we're here, it's also interesting to look at another component of the, the breaker, which is the arc extinguishing chamber. And this chamber does exactly what it says. It extinguishes an arc because if your breaker trips, it's normally because there's a very high current running through it. And you can imagine that, especially with DC current, which doesn't fluctuate, right? We looked at before, DC current is just constant. If you're trying to open the contact and the contacts are moving away from each other, you're actually forming a really strong electrical arc, a little bit of a lightning inside of your breaker. So what 
the breaker is designed to do is then redirect that arc towards the, the arc extinguishing chamber and it is here safely extinguished like slowly the energy is being taken out of that arc and therefore the arc just slowly extinguishes by itself i will show you how that happens um, so now we have a bit of an idea what's inside the breaker, right? We have the terminals where you connect it. We have the actuator lever with the mechanism behind it that allows for the, the flipping of the, the lever. Then you have the contacts. We're actually making or breaking the, the circuit. You have the bimetallic strip that bends uh, when you have a current that is slightly above normal. And then it can, like, that's the slowly tripping current, right? They have the calibration screw for fine tuning at which point the bimetallic strip will actually open or close the circuit. Then we have the arc extinguishing chamber and the solenoid. So the solenoid is responsible for the value of the instantaneous tripping current. So now just for fun, let's run through a couple of scenarios of how the current would run through the breaker. So the current would, let's say the current arrives at the bottom of the, the breaker through the terminal, then it will travel up through the, uh, through the solenoid. And then normally the, uh, the contacts are closed. In this situation, the contacts already open, but normally when the contacts are closed, the current would run through the contact, through the bottom contact, towards the, the top contact, and then through the bimetallic strip and then out through the top terminal. So you can see that in this situation, all of the current is going through both the, the solenoid and the bimetallic strip, right? And then if the, the current would um, be slightly elevated and within the region of the, the slow tripping current, then the bimetallic strip would heat up, it would start to bend and it would pop the contacts open and the circuit would be interrupted. And a similar thing would happen with the for the instantaneous tripping current. So all the current is running through both the solenoid and the bimetallic strip but if you have a sudden bump a sudden extreme increase of current through your electrical um, circuit then the the coil inside of the solenoid would be activated and it would push the mechanism it would actually push the mechanism then trip it and therefore the contacts will be opened as well and you're also interrupting your circuit and now that one of the three events has happened that will open the contacts so either way the bimetallic strip will open the contacts due to uh, it reaching the instantaneous stripping current or the current would be even much higher and just an instant burst of power will run through the breaker and the solenoid would open the contacts or you would open the uh, you would open the contacts by uh, flipping the actuator lever we can now see what will happen inside of the arc extinguishing chamber because as you can see the current has nowhere to go anymore right it cannot travel through the contacts anymore so it has only one way in order to get to the to the top terminal because it can the current can travel through the arc extinguisher and it wants to go through the arc extinguisher and then towards the top so it's following a different route in order to complete the circuit but as that the current is trying to go through the arc extinguisher it needs to make a very small arcs um, in order to jump from one plate to the other plate and as it's forming the arc the the arcs they are losing their energy because the electrical energy is converted into heat it's being dissipated and as that's happening slowly the arc is being extinguished and as a result the current cannot flow anymore so the current is not flowing out anymore and now you have safely um, interrupted your circuit by me through your circuit breaker okay that was a bit of a deep dive into breakers into the internal components of breakers now let's take a small excursion again and let's go online i want to go to the website of langir.com i am not affiliated affiliated with this manufacturer and let's go to products and select dc circuits miniature circuit breakers for dc and solar generation that's exactly what i was interested in and then let's download the brochure here so here we are in the brochure and you can already see that the the general shape of the breaker very much looks like the the holder that we looked at before for the fuses right because you can also clip this kind of a breaker you can clip it inside of a electrical box you can clip it on a rail so it's already made for that which is really useful so you know i don't think we have to dive too deep into the specification i just wanted to show you an example where you can see that you can also have two uh, breakers together sometimes they're interlinked as well that you can if one breaks the other one breaks as well uh, here's the model code where you have all the the amperage rating to talk about the instantaneous tripping current right there what we saw before and just let me show you one more thing this is about installation and removal 
of the breaker, right? So normally insulation is pretty easy. So you, you hang it over, you push it down and it clips on the reel. Uh, the removal, just take care of this, right? It's often a bit uh, fragile, the components that are involved in the removal. Normally at the bottom of the breaker, you need to pull something out downwards. And as you're doing that, now you can remove the, the breaker in the reverse way of how you installed it. So that was just a quick run through of an example of breakers that you can find online. And by now, I think you all know enough about breakers. So you